In the book Help Wanted at Mount Vernon, Lloyd, the fainting goat, gets sent to work in Washington's 16-sided barn. 16-sided barn? Did I just hear that correctly? I thought all barns were a four-sided shape where the door opened and the moo sound happened. Or maybe that's only in the Fisher-Price barn. I don't know. But George Washington had a 16-sided barn. So what's the benefit of having 16 sides to a barn? Does that seem awfully complicated? Well, here's why he needed it. In order to get wheat, you have to separate the grains from the chaff, and that's a complicated process called threshing, which is really challenging at the time. However, in the 16-sided barn, he figured out that you could have mules running around in a circle, and their feet would pound the chaff away from the seed. The seed would then fall through these slatted floors on the top floor, down here to the bottom floor, this process uses minimal manual labor and keeps everything free from the outside elements. But why 16 sides still? Wouldn't it even be better to just use a round barn? Wouldn't that be the perfect shape? But look at the ceiling of a circular barn. That is challenging and difficult to construct in George Washington's time. So what's the problem with a four-sided barn then? Why not just build that one? If you look at the four-sided barn from above, to maximize the space, the horses would have to run in an oval shape, which isn't practical because the horses get too much speed going and can crash up at the top of the oval. It makes much more sense for the horses to run in a circle, which is safer. However, look how much waste in the corner there is, and that would require a lot of laborers to shovel the wheat back underneath the horse's feet, which can be very dangerous for everyone involved. So a four-sided barn doesn't make much sense. So why 16? If the more sides you get, the closer you are to a circle, the best shape, why not have 22 sides? What about 32 sides or 72 sides? In order to answer that question, we're going to have to go back to George Washington's time and take a look at the tools that were available to him while he was designing his farm. We will also be using two of my favorite math practices, look for and express regularity and repeated reasoning, and using appropriate tools strategically. So how would we find the angles in a 16-sided barn? What is this angle measure right here? Well, if you think about it, you could right away today go grab a protractor and measure it. Unfortunately, George Washington did not have a protractor handy. So what did he have to do? Just like other mathematicians, we look for patterns. So instead of worrying about a 16-sided barn, let's take a look at a shape that's a little bit easier. Let's start with a rectangle. How am I gonna find the angles in here? Well, we know the angles of a rectangle are each 90 by definition. So if that's true, we could add them up to all four to be 360. However, problem is that what happens in a pentagon? That's not 90 degrees. So we're not sure without a, without a protractor. So we'll still go back to the rectangle and see how can I make this a little easier? What shape do I always know what the angles add up to? A rectangle, yes, but a rectangle doesn't always cover the shape of a pentagon. So let's go back to something simple like a triangle. If I divide my rectangle by in, by a diagonal into two triangles, I can see that if I break up the angles in there, I know that this triangle here will add up to 180, those angles. And then if I do this triangle inside here, triangle two, that'll add up to 180. But all together, those orange angles make the angles inside a rectangle. So that would add to 360 degrees. If I look at a pentagon, for instance, well, could I use that same process? Well, if I draw in the diagonals, of a pentagon, and there are two of them, instead of getting two triangles like I got on a rectangle, I'll get three triangles on a pentagon. Well, if I still do the same concept of adding up the angles inside, this added up to 180, this one adds up to 180, and this one adds up to 180. So all together, those orange angles get all the angles in a pentagon. So it's 180 three times. 180 plus 180, plus 180. So all together, that's gonna to be 540 degrees. So all those angles add up to 540 degrees. So it seems like there's kind of a pattern going on here if I look at how many triangles. This had two triangles, this had three triangles. If I continue on with some other shapes, I move up to a hexagon. Well, the same thing could be true for a hexagon. If I draw in the diagonals, it looks like I have one, two, three, four triangles. 
So if I do the same thing where I add up the 180s to pull all the hexagon in, I'm gonna have four 180s, which is gonna give me 720. And this, a heptagon, going with the same process. Will it give me five triangles if I break it up? One, two, three, four, five. So yeah, it's gonna have five triangles and that's gonna be 580s. And instead of just adding it over and over, I'm gonna multiply it to get 900. So it seems like no matter if I keep adding on sides to these shapes, then I'm gonna get another 180. So that being said, instead of continuing on to the 16 sided, which would be kind of complicated, instead I'm gonna use practice number eight which is using repeated calculations and taking a look at structure to figure out if I can come up with a formula so I can get to 16 sides a little bit easier. So we said a four-sided shape had two triangles inside of it, and that gave me two times 180 or 360, and that was my rectangle. Then for a pentagon, once again, three sides, and I get three times 180, which gives me my 540. And the same thing continues with my hexagon. There were four triangles in my hexagon, and that gave me 720. My heptagon had five triangles in it, and that gave me 900. So if that's the case, I would continue that pattern on and I could go up to 16 sided figure. But instead I'm gonna look to see, hey, can I look at that repeated calculation and make some kind of a formula out of it? Well, I might be able to do just that. So if I look at how I started from the beginning all the way over to the end, I always seem to start with the number of sides. And I'm gonna call that N for number of sides. I could also call X, it doesn't matter, whatever. And that would represent this column. But to get to the number of triangles, it seems that the pattern is, no matter what, because they keep going up by one each time, but there's always two number of triangles less than the number of sides. So I would say, noticing that this number kept repeating over here, that the 180 is a constant and doesn't change. And how do I get from here to here? Well, I subtract two. So we would say no matter what your sides are, subtract two, and then you take that whole number and multiply it by 180. And that's gonna give you the total degrees inside your shape. That's the concept of using practice number eight, is looking at what repeated calculations you have and what structure is in place. And from there, I can create a formula that I don't have to keep generating this table. Because if I wanted a 102-sided figure, I'm not gonna wanna continue this table on. So I'm gonna use this pattern to help me calculate and say, okay, well, if that's the formula I'm gonna use, what is my 16-sided figure? Well, I'm gonna subtract two to get the number of triangles and take the number of triangles times 180. So 14 times 180, and I'm gonna get 2,520. And that's gonna be the total degree measure of angles inside. Well, so how does that help me? Back to George Washington's 16-sided barn. Now that I know it, all of the angles add up to 2,520, I don't know if that really helps me a whole lot. So why 16 sides? Why not 22 sides? Why not 32 sides? I mean, because that gets us closer and closer to a circle, why 16? Well, let's take a look then. If I used if I know that these shapes, and what's so, what's so interesting about the shapes that we were using earlier, is there's something particular about them. These shapes here are called regular. And regular shapes mean that they have equal angles, all their angles are the same, and all their sides have the same length. So if all the angles add up to 900 and are all exactly the same, you divide by the number of sides to get one angle measure. Well, that being the case, I would divide this by 16 to say, what is one of those angle measures? And it turns out it is 157.5, okay? So let me take that information forward and see how that would help me. So one of the angles in that 16-sided barn is 157.5 degrees. Well, once again, I still don't have a protractor. So what, how does that help me? How am I gonna get a uh, 157.5 degree angle. Well, first of all, I can start with 90 and see what a 90 degree. Right now, I'm just gonna use the corner of this piece of paper to give me my 90. However, back in the day of George Washington, how do you know that the paper is exactly 90 degrees? Well, 
you can use a little trick by uh, one of our famous mathematicians, Pythagoras, and say, hmm, Pythagoras, how would I know if I have a 90 degree angle? Well, you can make a three, four, five length triangle, three inch by four inch by five inch, or three feet, four, five. So a lot of people at the time had a three, four, five rope. And if you want to look at that, you might want to take a look at Pythagoras to see how he did it. So here's a 90 degree, and if I subtract off 90, from this angle, I still have some ways to go. That's not gonna help me very much. Well, if I, if I cut a 90 in half, I can get a 45 degree angle. So once I have my right angle, I fold it in half, I cut it, and now I have a 45 to go with that. So this is 90, this is 45. Subtract off 45 here. But that's still not all the way there. What happens? What do I have left? A 22.5 degree angle. Well, interestingly enough, if I cut 45 in half, I get 22.5. So I take another 45 from the one 45 I'd cut off and cut that in half, and I get my little 22.5 angle measure here. So here's my 22.5. Past that, it's really hard to cut the paper in half, but this is a 157.5 degree angle. And that would be able to measure all the angles, each angle going around. And that's how people in George Washington's time came up with it. And that's why they used a 16 sided barn rather than 22 sides or 52 because they aren't um, divisible by 90 in any way. So thinking back to the tools available during the 1790s, what other regular shapes can you draw accurately using an angle measuring tool that you make yourself? Are there patterns involved in the shapes that are available to you? Be inquisitive like George Washington and ask yourself, what would the general do?